worry. Recently, I had to update social authorization logic in my web app Increaser. And after finishing the work, I decided to record a video to walk you through the process so you could do the same in your own React Node.js app and have Google, Facebook, LinkedIn authorization in no time. Let's begin. Go to Increaser and see how authorization implemented here. There is two buttons, sign in, sign up, and both of the models share the same component with links to corresponding authorization provider. So you can see at the bottom there's like LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, and the same for sign up. So it's basically the same component, the only difference is text. Let's try to sign up with Google. I already have an account and voila, we authorized in the app. That's pretty much it. Now we could go to the front end code and see how it's all implemented. We start, you should understand that you need a client ID and client secret for every provider. There's more details on this on in the blog post that I attached to the description. You could go there and check it out. But it's pretty easy. You go uh, to Google Developer Console or Facebook Developer, or LinkedIn Developer, create an app there and enable OAuth to authorization. Then you copy client ID or client secret. Uh, we will need client ID only for the front end part and we'll use client secrets on the back end. Also, all the codes that will be shown here, you could find in the blog post. I haven't put it in the repository because both projects are private and it didn't make much sense to create a separate repository just for authorization. Front end, there is one component that we reuse between both models, and we distinguish which model is which by taking a purpose from the state. And based on purpose, we show different text here. Uh, so the component is pretty simple. We go over each provider and return buttons that act as a link. And to get links, we call a specific function. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. And uh, here we have colors, icons for each provider and we take providers from constants. So here we have some kind of an enum uh, with JavaScript and also names for providers. Here's purposes. Here's a pairs of URL and scope for each provider. So we have for Google and here's the scope with user and for user profile of Facebook. There's also we take profile and email and LinkedIn, the same like profile and email address. So we have the same structure for every provider. To create provider URL, we are using get URL with query params function that turns base URL and an object with parameters to a URL with query string. So let's go check this function out. So what it does, it iterates over each parameter and creates a query key and we join all of this with uh, end and then we return base query separated by question mark. So this way we create URL with query parameters. There are some difference between providers but client ID, reject URI and scope present in every URL. And in order to get client ID, we take it from environment variables. Uh, in order to generate reject URI, uh, we call this function. So for example, if uh, we have Google provider, it will look like increaser.org, uh, path in this case OAuth, and then query parameter provider. So we have the same page, but query parameter will be different between the providers. Uh, that's pretty much it. So when user press on one of the button, he will be redirected to one of these URLs. And once he's finished, he'll be redirected back to URI we specified here. There's nothing happens in OS page. We don't return 
or render anything and instead we call a specific action that will do all the logic and this action triggers an appropriate saga that take query string from the URL and immediately redirects user to the main page so he doesn't even see this page because the redirect will happen immediately but at that moment we already have query string and if it's present we get code and provider from the string by calling query to object helper it parses query string uh, it's split it by the sign and returns an object so we check if there is a proper provider and in this case we execute query let's check this out so it receives provider code redirect uri and time zone uh, we need it for increaser you most probably won't need time zone so we pass uh, it to the query and receive email name token token inspection time id and first identification and if it has first identification set to true it means that user just signed up in the app and in this case i show uh, onboarding model uh, right away and at the end there's like increase the specific code to synchronize all the data that's pretty much for the front end now let's go to the back end and see what's happening there i use graphql so here we have identify with oauth query that receives these parameters and returns user and we already saw what user type present and uh, this is our provider and query has a lot of increaser specific code but the first thing we do here is we call um, get validated user function uh, and we pass code and redirect URI to it so we have a specific function for every provider now let's go and check this out so as you can see uh, the process is pretty much the same for every provider the first step is to get access token and then we use it to get user data the same for facebook uh, in this case we also take access url access token and return user data uh, for linkedin it's also the same we take access token but we need to do two requests because uh, one of them doesn't return email address, so we need to do two requests. And once we've done with it, and what is some step we generate our data. And to do this, uh, I use JSON Web Token Library. So we take lifespan, secret from and variables, and create GVT token and in the lambda there is uh, some kind of middleware that takes header uh, takes token and calls uh, this function that decode a gvt token and take user id so that's pretty much it this is how authorization implemented in cruiser i hope you found something useful in this example and could take something to your own project. Take care.